In the previous lecture, we have studied about the primitive built-in types in C++ and in this lecture, we are going to study about the signed and unsigned types in C++. So we will see what are the signed and unsigned types, what are they used for and how they differ from each other. Alright, so let's get started. So talking about the signed and the unsigned types, except for the boolean and the extended character types, the integral types may be signed or unsigned. So we have studied about the various types that we have in C++ and we have seen that we have something called the integral types and also we have seen the boolean data types and the character types. So apart from the boolean and the extended character types that we have, the integral types that we have discussed can either be signed or unsigned. Now what do we actually mean by this signed or unsigned? Let's see. So signed means they represent negative or positive numbers including zero. So from the name itself, you can try to understand signed. It means that it can represent signs as well for values. Now, when do we usually use signs? It is usually for representing negative numbers. So if we don't give a sign, it usually means that that number is a positive number. But if you want to explicitly mention that a number is negative, then we give a negative sign in front of the number. So the signed types are used for representing negative or positive numbers, including zero. And then what about unsigned? Unsigned represents only values greater than or equal to zero. So from the name itself, we can understand even the meaning of unsigned. Unsigned means it cannot support any sign. It will only be positive numbers. So whenever we are talking about sign, keep in mind that we are more focused on the negative numbers because by default, if we don't mention any sign, it is a positive number. So in unsigned types, they can represent only values greater than or equal to zero. That means they are essentially positive numbers and zero. So that is what we mean by the signed and the unsigned types in C++. Now the types integer, short, long and long long are all signed. So by default, whenever we make use of these data types that we have already discussed in previous lectures, these are all already signed data types by default. So if you are using a simple int that is an integer or short or long or long long, they are by default already signed. That means they can support even negative numbers. Now, what about unsigned? What if we want to declare an unsigned data type? So we obtain the corresponding unsigned type by adding unsigned to the type. So that means if you want to explicitly mention that the type is going to be unsigned, then we have to use this unsigned keyword before the data type. So here we have an example, unsigned long. So what this means is that I am declaring a data type of the type long and it has to be unsigned. So that is why we mention it as unsigned long. So similarly, you can say unsigned integer, unsigned int, which means that it is an integer data type and it is unsigned. So when we say unsigned, what does it mean? It will not support negative numbers. It will only be positive numbers. Now you may have the question, why do we need this signed and unsigned? Why can't we just have only signed? Because signed supports both positive and negative. So what is the use of this unsigned? So in order to explain that, we have to understand how values are represented in the computer. So we know that though we use decimal numbers, in the background, everything is binary. And for representing binary numbers, we use certain number of bits. Now, let's say that we are having certain number of bits for representing a number. Now, if you also want to represent the sign for that number, so let's say that it is a negative number. Now for representing that sign, we need to dedicate some bits for that sign as well. So those bits that are dedicated for sign will be used only for the sign of that number and then only the remaining bits can be used for representing the value. So if we are having limited number of bits, we see that the range of the values that can be supported will be limited when we are using signed types. But in case of unsigned, we are not going to dedicate any number of bits for the sign. So the entire bits that we have can be used for the value itself. So we can have a larger range in case of unsigned numbers. So that is why we are having the signed and unsigned types separately in C++. Okay, so with that, I hope you have understood the basic difference between signed and unsigned types. And we have also discussed about some of the integral types that we have seen here. Now, what about the character types? So let us talk a little bit about the character types now. Now coming to the basic character types, can character types also be signed and unsigned? The answer is yes, they can be. And unlike the other integer types, 
there are three distinct basic character types. So we have seen that in the integral types there are only two distinct types that is signed and the unsigned. And when you don't mention whether it is signed or unsigned, I already told you that by default it will be signed. Now in case of characters, it's a bit different. Let's see. So in character, we have the simple character, then we have the signed character and the unsigned character. Now what is the difference between these three? So we understand what is the meaning of signed and unsigned character. Signed means it will have sign. Unsigned means it will not support sign. Now what about this character? Now in the case of integrals, we said that whenever we don't mention whether it is signed or unsigned, it is already signed by default. So isn't character also signed by default if we don't mention anything in front of it? The answer is no. These two are not the same. Character and signed character are not the same. Okay, if they are not the same, then what is the difference? So although there are three character types, there are only two representations, signed and unsigned. So we see that there are three character types, but there are only two representations. That means they will either be signed or unsigned. So don't get confused. Let's make it clear. So it essentially means that if it is written signed character, it is signed. And if it is unsigned character, it is an unsigned character. And if it is a simple character, what is it? The answer is it can either be signed or unsigned and that will depend upon the compiler that you use. So the plain character type uses one of these representations. So it will differ from compiler to compiler. So in some compilers simple character may mean signed character and in some compilers this simple character may mean unsigned character. So that is the difference. So we see that although we are having three character types, there are only two representations. Okay, so that was about the basic character types. Now let's take an example program to understand the working of this signed and unsigned types with the help of an integer example. Okay, so coming to this example, we have a program here and in this program we have our main function and inside the main function, I have declared an integer of the type unsigned and the name of the variable is num and I assign the value minus one to it. Now here below that I declare another variable called x which is also of the type integer and here I did not mention whether it is signed or unsigned which means that by default it will be a signed integer. And into this x I am assigning the value num. What is num? Num is having the value minus 1. So I am just assigning this num to this x again and then I am printing out the value of num and x separated by a comma. So that is all what this program is going to do. Now take a moment to just pause and try to see what will be the output of this program. Okay, so we see that here I am declaring an unsigned integer. And what is an unsigned integer? Unsigned integer means it is not going to be able to store signs. That means it is not going to support negative numbers. But what am I doing here? I am storing a negative value that is minus one into this num. And then I am storing that same num to this x again. Now this x is a signed integer and because of that it can actually store this minus one. So this part is okay but what about this? I am declaring an unsigned integer and storing a minus or a negative number to it. Is it going to throw an error or are we going to get any output? So let us go to Visual Studio Code and run this program and see what is the output and then we will see why the output comes that way. Okay so here we are on Visual Studio Code and I have that same program written down over here. Now let us compile this program. So the name of the program is sign unsigned.cpp. So we type g++ sign unsigned.cpp and I press enter and let's see if it is compiling properly. Yes, it has compiled properly and there are no errors. Now the default output file name is a.exe. So let's run that file. So here we type dot slash a.exe and I press enter and let's see what is the output. Okay, so here we have the output. So when I printed num, it printed this strange number over here, this lengthy number here. And then when we printed x, it printed minus 1. Now why did we get this output? So let us try to analyze and find out. Okay, so we saw that when we printed num, we have a very strange number printed here. What is this number? We'll come back to that. Now what about this minus 1 here? We saw that in num we stored minus 1 and this same num, that is minus 1 was stored to x. Now since x is a signed integer, it can hold negative values and because of that when I printed the value of x, it printed minus 1 which was stored in x. 
but in case of num it is an unsigned integer and there we are storing this minus 1 and when I printed this minus 1 that is this num it printed this strange value. Now why did this happen? Let's analyze and find out why. Now why that happened is because whenever a negative number is stored in an unsigned integer type what happens in the background is that that particular number is going to be converted to its two's complement. So we know that two's complement is used for representing negative numbers and because of that this minus one is actually converted to its two's complement. Now let's see how it is converted to its two's complement. Now before converting it to the two's complement we have to understand that though we are making use of this decimal number system over here in the background everything is in binary. Everything happens with the help of zeros and ones. So we have to first convert this one to binary and then we can proceed and see how the two's complement will look like. Okay now here we are assuming that 32 bits are used for representing each values. Now we have minus one and the binary equivalent is converted to its two's complement. So that's what I said. So let's see how we can do it. So we are going to first write this minus one in 32 bits format in binary. So let's ignore the sign for now. Just forget about this sign for now and think that if you are going to write one in binary in 32 bits format, how will it be written? It will be written like this. There are 31 zeros followed by this one over here. So 32 bits are used in total and this is the binary equivalent of 1 in 32 bits format. Okay, now the next step is to convert this binary number to its two's complement. Now how to convert a number to its two's complement? So in order to convert a number to its two's complement, we have to first convert it to its one's complement. Now how to convert a number to its one's complement? We can convert a number to its one's complement by inverting all the bits. That means all the zeros will be changed to one and all the ones will be changed to zeros. So let's do that. So the one's complement of this number will be like this. So all these zeros, these 31 zeros, they are converted to ones and this last one that we have is converted to zero. So this is the one's complement of this number. Now we got the one's complement. Now in order to convert it to its two's complement, what do we have to do? So to convert a number to its two's complement after obtaining the one's complement, it is very easy. You just have to add one bit to it. That means you just have to sum one to it. So it is binary addition and we are going to just add one to this number. So the two's complement is obtained by adding one to this number over here. So if you add one to this, this is the output that we get. That means this is the result that we get. And this number, we have to convert it back to its decimal equivalent. Now, if we convert it to decimal equivalent, let's see what is the value. So if you want, you can convert it manually, but it is going to take a lot of time to convert it manually. So I will make use of a simple converter to convert this number to its decimal equivalent. So here I'm going to use this website called Rapid Tables, which is a great website that can be used for converting numbers from one format to another. So here I'm going to convert from binary to decimal. So here I'm going to paste the number that we just obtained and we are going to convert this binary number to its equivalent decimal. So let me click on convert. Now when I click on convert, you see that we are obtaining this number which is the exact number that we saw in our output when we ran the program. So we see that the output is 42949672295. And if you look at our Visual Studio code, you see 42949672295. This is the same number. So that is what actually happened in the background. When we gave minus one to an unsigned integer, the one was converted to its binary equivalent in 32 bits format. And because there was minus in front of it, it converted that binary number to its two's complement and the equivalent decimal number was what was printed on the screen. So that is what happened over there. And that is what will happen if you try to assign negative numbers to unsigned integer types. So with this, I hope you have understood the basic concept of signed and unsigned types in C++. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.